as we said. Got it. Okay, send me the recording. Um, yeah, okay, the topic that I, I, I chose to teach today is something which I have started teaching also just in Karen Piavna, and that is Tame Amitzvah and Dasa Rambam and the Ramban. I'd like to start this with a Pusik in last week's Parsha in Shmais Tesvav, where the Pusik says uh, in Pusik Chavav, Ayemer, and um, Moshe said to the Jews in Mora, Im Shamoya Tishma, Lekol Hashem Elokecha, if you um, um, uh, seriously listen carefully to the voice of God, and you will do that which is straightforward in his eyes, and you will listen carefully to his mitzvahs, and you will adhere or keep, preserve all of his statutes, all the illnesses which I had placed in Egypt. Um, the Ibn Ezra explains on the idea of the Shamata Lakoila Shema Lokecha, so the Ibn Ezra writes, Ain Pirush the Hadavar does not mean to hear the words. But rather, Shmia here is, a, is an idea of understanding it means to understand the idea, the thinking, the reasoning behind the mitzvah. And also, he has to understand what it is that he's commanded to do. The Ramban concurs with this. And the Ramban writes it there in Pasek Chavva, Pirish Rabbeinu Avraham, quoting the Ibn Ezra Lavin Tam, to understand the reasoning, what he commanded you to do. And then he goes on further, he quotes again, that's a mechilta, means try to understand also the, the, the background behind the light that says, this is light that amru. He's doing business. A person which is straightforward and trustworthy in truth and when he does business. Thus he is socially liked and accepted. Because obviously he has distilled the value system found from Kala Terakula, which he's living by. So we see Mala of Akasuf, Kila Kala Terakula. And the Ramban sentences, the Oda Vayez, I will elucidate this and explain it by Gi when I come to the Pasi Vayez Hanon of the Pasi Vasisa Yashar Vatai, Imake, Initeva Kel, Imiatai. Adkat, we see here from this Pasi, at least the way it's understood in the Ibn Ezra and elaborated in the Ramban. It seems to me here, Kaddish Baruch is demanding us to try to understand not just the Allahs, but what are the value systems behind the Allahs. And that's what the Ramban says, that he will elaborate this when he says in Pashas Ha'isisa, Yashav Ha'atayv, also in Kedoshim, where he elaborates that what Yashav Ha'atayv does not mean the mitzvahs, it means the values what the mitzvahs represent. And how do we know that? He says, well, you'll learn Tyrus, you'll realize that God is obsessed with personal hygiene. And you'll brush your teeth and shower. You know, he says these things. Literally, you read the Ramban and Kedoshim, he says that. It means to say living a certain lifestyle which your values are distilled from the broad corpus of the total mitzvahs by understanding not just the law, but trying to understand the thinking behind it. This is probably the closest source that one has in uh in, in, in the Dabar Mavura, in the Mikra, that there's an Indian that God wants us to try to understand Tamaya Mitzvahs. That it's not enough just to be religious in the idea, but you actually have to think of the religious thinking which it represents and therefore distill from it values and a lifestyle. Equals, there's really no gray area. This is also legislated. God says, This is my will. Well, as I've talked multiple times in the past, the express will of God is binding. We discussed this multiple times. The express will of God is binding to the extent that it's Mechaiv Nisa of Ben Noyach. The Bnei Noyach, where Metsuva al as we once discussed this in the previous year, although the Ramah writes somewhere in the Vuch, and there was no direct Sivui until Moshe Rabbeinu, it was only Derek Limud. So we see that even Derek Limud of Ratzin HaKosh Bochu is binding to the extent of even Achiev Nisa. 
the greatest example would be, if you really want to know, take an extreme Gemara of needed that gimel, your gimel over there, Sheikh Zer Levatola. There's no love. It's just the idea that that's Rosh and Hashem and your Chayv Misa B'nei Shammai. What do you need more than that? Okay? There's no love there. And there is the mice that Mar says, you Chayv Misa B'nei Shammai. Where's the love? It's Ke'ilu X and Ke'ilu Y, but a Ke'ilu doesn't put you into a love. So you see, even without an Azhora, with an express understanding of Rosh and Hashem Baruch it is binding to the extent that it can be quite perilous. So this is what it seems to be saying here. This is Russian of Bur in the Mikra of Azantal Mitzvah. of God is saying, I expect you to do this. The Shemata Lokoiva Mitzvah. I'd like to try to go into this carefully and to see, I want to go, if you don't mind, starting with Dasa Rambam in this. If you have the source sheet, so I'm going to quote a Rambam in, in, in the uh, in Hichus Me'ila and Perik Ches. Where the Rambam writes in Aloha Ches, I'm going to start just a few words. Ra'uila Adam, lit bonem be mishpatea to Agdosha, vileida saif in Yanam kefika chai. What does he just say here? Once again, he doesn't say mitsuva Adam, chai Adam. He's not talking about a religious imperative. What does that mean? It is theologically worthwhile. That's what he's saying. Yes, and as God did not command it, but let's just say this is a suggestion which we suggest you do because it's it's um life endearing, you know. We'll, we'll call it that, but we'll be nice about that. We'll say yes, it's kedaylacha. Okay, Ra'uri Adam is a theological value and therefore worthy to do. Lizbonemba Mishpatea Torah to look to contemplate, to look in with Bina. Bina would mean Lahabin Dava Mitaich Dava. To be able to conceptualize and extrapolate, to translate, to take it out of its uh, out of its uh, legal garment of form and to take out the core idea and understand it. That's what love means. You can't conceptualize, you can't exactly extrapolate without that. I mean, I'm, right? There's no way you can extrapolate without conceptualizing. I, maybe some people can't, I can't, okay? You obviously can't extrapolate without conceptualizing. So that I uh, equals you see, your command, you, it's right to conceptualize these mitzvahs in order to extrapolate. That's what this bone means for goodness sakes. What does Bina mean? Lavin davar mitoch davar. Mishpatea Torah, Dosha, talking about the laws of the Torah, but they da say in your nam, and to understand what is their end idea, their core idea, not just the basic rule of the Yenichmes was the Shnaim Oysen Metalis, is Yachloika with the Shmur. What's the idea behind it? Says I didn't for Mama Mutlubah suffix, says I didn't for Anansadi. Start telling me what it really is. Don't tell me the law. The law is the pots and pans. We take the, we have to walk away. You have to keep the pots and pans, but you have to understand what's the thinking behind it. So he said, lay the safe in your name. And here he says something very important. According to your own potential. Now, what would that mean? Does that mean every idiot, which basically knows how to brush his teeth and learning, is supposed to voice an opinion? What does it mean? Do I expect a uh, face us, uh, uh, a boy that, you know, the, <laughs> he learned his Mishnah Brewer, Hilchas Shabbos, he should start telling me Pshat in, in time of Mitzvah. What do you have to know? What do you have to know to be called an Odom in Dasa Ramba? It's right, the Odom is by name, but you have to, well, you have to, that the Chabbina. Okay, you first have to have Bina. First, they have to be an Adam. And now that you're an Adam and you have Bina, you're supposed to utilize that and the Fi Kaychayv and Adam, Balbina, to do this. Any Balbina will not get into a discipline unless he's mastered it. A Adam Nabain doesn't get into mitzvahs with a superficial understanding it without knowing the whole depth and scope of it. How would he begin to understand the, 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 the thinking in the background before I would have the bottom picture? That's number one. So the Ramah is basically telling you it is worthwhile for any person which is competent, and that's what he means. He's not talking about Zaymer Michael, John, Dick, and Harry, 
that write inspiring lectures that tell you, well, this is maybe what it means. You know, maybe it's, you can be matching a guna with a maybe, maybe it's okay. But since you can't be matching a guna with a maybe, so the maybe is garnished. You know, possibilities, blah, blah. This sounds Baba Mises. Can you do a say base midrash? Okay, so we understand, right? I'm talking to the, I'm preaching to the choir here. So we understand uh, that that's a Dover Pashat, that that's what the Rabbi was saying, but it's, it's subjective. Why is he adding the word subjective? What's Kefi Koychai? Every lemur that Torah is Kefi Koychai. You can't learn more Lefi Koychai. What's the Rabbim Lefi Koychai? What does Rabbim mean with that? What does he want? What he's clearly saying that there is no objective truth. And it's only going to be subjective. That's what he's saying. He said, we're not expecting you to attain an objective truth. You're supposed to, what your goal is to attain a subjective understanding. Otherwise, what's the fikaycha? I mean, you know how to read these Okay, what's he adding here? You know, by the way, you don't have to get to the top. You can climb wherever you can. He's very nice. He's a good advice counselor. What does the Rama want? That's the that's the Roy. That means there's a we're not we're not looking at all at an objective truth. We're looking at subjective truth. Now this is an interesting idea here. Now where does it come from? Where does he get these ideas? See, I understand the royal these binder mishpat Tyra will be coming out if he interpreted these pasuk in Bishal, just like the Ibn Ezra and the Ramban. But if that's his source, how do I know the idea of the Maybe Taki after the Saitam, Mehavah, Mr. Sveinay, Sarah, to understand the face this was, you know, God knows what. Who's the Lafi Kaikha? That's number one. It's obvious that the source of the Ramam is what he writes himself in a book which he uh, wrote later. It's called Mur in the Vuchim. Okay, so the Ramam and the Myra and the first source you have in front of you in the third volume, the 31st chapter, beginning the whole series of Psukim, of Prokim, dealing with Tame Amitzvah, has a very important chapter. The chapter has to be read carefully, meticulously. I say this because in the world of academia, my gut feeling is that people talk so much about Tame Amitzvah, especially when it comes to Vayikra. Everybody has what to say. About Tame and Mitzvahs and every Shmendrik, etc., Zachiv and the Kebel, Kol Minim Acherim. They all are sure that according to the Rambam, that there's no Karbonis afterwards, you know, because it's not civilized. We don't need this, we don't need that. And every Yonik, Mishdei Imai, he says yes and he agrees. And the Amaratsis is like beyond contempt. Because if they'd only realize how many Mitzvahs the Rambam writes in Per, in, 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 in Mitzvahs, which have to do with weaning away from Abu Dazora, you'd be getting rid of something like 80 of them. And no one thinks that Basim Bukhalaf won't exist after by 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 Shlish. And by by Basim Bukhalaf is because that was the diet of Kaina Abu Dazora Bisman on Rijama and Navuk. Obviously, they didn't read that because they only read whatever they read or whatever they didn't read, or whatever, and then they come to tell me speeches. I suggest we say that there won't be busted by Chalavaishlish. Does anybody say that? No. Because no one has anything against busted by Chalav, but animal sacrifices are barbaric. So thank God there was a Rama which we can misconstrue and not read, and then say that Judaism fits with my modern approach. The Marshal says that Zio Fatoy was a Chiv of Yarig Val Yava. This is a Zio Fatoy, categorically. It's a zil for It's a zil for Dasa Rambam. This is no joke. And here I'm going to read where the Rambam is coming from to understand. Ram, let me add another two questions on the table before we start. Did you ever notice if it's worthy to find, according to this Rambam, it's worthy to find the reasons. Did the Rambam fulfill that? Well, let's look. He gave reasons which are not really important to the contemporary man of his period. He lived in Moorish Spain and in uh, and Morocco, which was under the Moors. He lived in an Islam society, which is not Oibdavay de Zora, according to Rambam. And yet he explains the mitzvahs in a non-contemporary reason, which is not relevant to himself. 
And he doesn't ask the question, why are they now existent if they're not relevant to us? If these are the reasons and the reasons are obsolete, why did he in Moor Spain have to do all these mitzvahs, which are to be as he explains himself? And he doesn't bring that up as a question. And what reasons does he give? We'll see shortly. He gives reasons which are contemporary and very dated to the era in which the mitzvahs were given, the biblical era. They are reasons which would, became obsolete even in the second temple era. After Shechitis Yitzhahar of Avedizorah, as the Gemara describes, there was no more running after Avedizorah in the world that we know. I repeat what the Ramban calls Merkaz Olam. Not talking about the Far East. We're talking about the uh, the cultured societies of Europe, Asia at that period of time. That's what you call the uh, the, the basket and the cradle of culture. There, there was Kemat Navidazor. Not going into where the Natsus is or is not Avidazor. This is not Nagar to hear. It's, it's a sheer farzik. Harshness it is. If for us, it's an Isra of Shittu, but that's also not the Avedah Zorah that he was talking about back then. Most of those time only relate to the Kaine Avedah Zorah, which were back then, which were Avedah Abal V'chulu. They have, I don't recall that the Franciscan friars eat Basa V'chulah. It's part of the Derech of Avedah Zorah. I said, maybe you should check it out. I don't think so. It's not part of their dinim. Multiple alachas, korcha alamei, zaymer meichel. You know, it's true in the in in, in 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 Iran, they have this whole yard site when the when the prophet Ali got murdered. So they literally do korcha and saretes. They do all that. That's not found in Christian reality. The soichedak yavoid is or murder kol alma. Why is it nagar now? It's a bias of a kutcha. Anyone who has a two drops of intellectual honesty that the Ramam is not looking for a, the source, which is relevant to me today. He's looking for a source, which was relevant at that period of time. Obviously implying that the reason this continues because this is not the reason, it is a reason. Because if it would be the reason, then the question would be, then why weren't they but the whom X amount of years later? So to come up this weird idea that the us is lovely, there won't be a carbon, the Khlemer Michael, the guy doesn't have what you're doing. If that would be true, there's so many myths that should have been but a long time ago. If you would have read the list of the time of mitzvahs. I say this because to by chagrin and his sorrow, this is quite rampant in the world of academia. You know, you'll go to the more where they do Judaic studies, they brandize Vachulu, great scholars of Maimonides, you'll see, without giving names, you'll see these things printed. And since God knows where you will be in your academic world, and since you're all open to uh, deal with your open academic religious issues, right? Like you want to know the development of the Gemara and the levels and all the other riffraff, which somehow the Rishonim weren't worried about. To Isaac and these things before you're a Bucky and Shas, because some little yingle that comes and gives a drush and little, little, little there is for showing him. Hey, you guys are wasting your lives. So, first, you have to understand it's a bias of a kutcha. And I'm a Michael. You know, and he push about Tashkis and good time. And as the Ramam says, he believes that there's a very important theological value in learning philosophy. He says you have to know that only after you're a bucky of Avais, the Bay of Not a little upstart who started learning at the age 18, did two years in Israel, and now he's back in YU. And wow, he knows how to say Chetz and Gabra and three Sudyas, and now he's going to deal with who knows what. I'm sorry to be honest, but this is the truth. I hope this goes further to many people. Don't waste your times. After you have a lave miyushiv and a mayach miyushiv, then you can read everything on me. Everything. It's like in checkers, man. Once you get to the top, you can roll any direction you want. But first you have to get to the top. You're not there. You do one space at a time. No jumping. Only when you capture a goal. I in checkers with tsunachas. 
Okay, this is the Yisrael Advar, and you have to understand that's how these things work. A little boy, I mean, honestly, this is beyond contempt. Okay, well, I hope, yeah, whatever. I hope they'll still let me out of the Zoom with you guys, or let me into the building, but this is the way it is. It's like you make sure I get into the building, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is the Maisa. So we have to understand that the Ramam is not looking for the reason. He's looking, not even looking for a contemporary reason which should give him understanding of the mission to facilitate his own private, the, I need a, a connection to the mitzvahs, an emotional connection to the mitzvahs to facilitate that me. Believe me, the fact that Kainei Abal had certain minhagim doesn't make me closer to Basra Vachol. And I don't think it made the Ramam closer either. So obviously he's not looking for a facilitator in order to behave. That's not what he's doing. He doesn't need an emotional connection to this. Maybe he does, but not through that. As the Israelis say, I'm okay? At the end of the day, that's not what he's looking for. He's not connecting emotionally through some odd reason which is not relevant to him or his society for the last thousand years. So what's he doing? It's obvious that somehow there's a truth there and values there which can be distilled from them, which are negate to you because those are God's values. You have to look at those things, but the reason there, what does that reason represent to you in a value system? It doesn't mean that that's the reason of the mitzvah, for goodness sakes. It means it's a mitzvah. Why? Because you're supposed to learn values from that mitzvah. Well, the values you can only take to the extent that the human being can comprehend. The human being can comprehend simplistically that there's a value here. Does that mean to say that's the reason for the legislation and the protum of the legislation? I'll give you an example. Anybody learning Tami Amitsas of the Rambam will know that he doesn't go into particulars. He only deals with broad strokes. Oh, for example, the idea of Tfilin is obviously Zechitz yes, Mitzrayim, and he'll elaborate, explain what the importance of Zechitz yes, Mitzrayim is. But he won't bother telling you why are they black and not orange. He won't tell you why they're square and not oval. He won't tell you why the the bias of the bias Shirush has four compartments and bias Shiyad only has one. He won't tell you why the Shin Alakham Shimasina and the Shirush and not Shiyad. So he won't tell you a thing. Now, one day you will present your theses to the president of, or to the senate of whatever university you will actually graduate from with your PhDs. If, and you know, if you try to draw a, a, some kind of a, a thesis which won't cover the basis, just maybes, they'll throw you out. Unless you're, <laughs> maybe the humanities. <laughs> Over there, you know, and if my belly hurts that way, so maybe you'll get something. But if you don't cover, if there's so many pratim that you don't cover, now anybody knows halacha, there may be 613 mitzvahs, but 613 million pratim. <laughs> and he doesn't even get close to dreaming of touching the pratim. Is he going to say those pratim are totally haphazard and the rest is just directed? Did God throw dice when he decided that the tomb will have black and not orange? Is that very logical? Was it default? God do something, so why not? So why this? Throw dice. If that's logical, my name is Huck Finn. And it isn't. We must come to a conclusion that there is some kind of infinite wisdom beyond comprehension of man, which lies there. Is that the, there's the reason? There's a reason. Just, I don't understand it. It may not have been given to me through revelation. Religion is not a philosophy or history that you make up with your belly. Religion is something which is dependent on revelation. It, what, that which was not revealed does not exist in the world of dogma and theology. And therefore, in truth, we don't know. 
Maybe if God believes that we're not capable of comprehending at this stage, we'll deal with it shortly. It's a Ramban, which deals with this. Of course, your Ramban, which deals with this. And I will, we will read this. Hope, I don't know if we'll have time today. Some other time, what can we do? I'll show you where the Ramban is. It's in your sheets. So what is it that we're looking for? What is it really we're looking for? It's definitely not the reason because there's no, there's no, why, why exactly does this Corbin have, is, is a chilase for Yom Belayla? This is Shnei Yom Belayla Echad. Why this, did you ever say it was a McClayman in the morning? Why is this Shechita but suffering and this is not? Why is this Rik is done Beftim and this Rik is done Bechutz? Why is this Shtayim Shem Arba? Why is this only not? not? Why is this Rik and why is this Shvicha? Obviously, these are not the reasons of the reasons of God. They are kafi kaychay to what you can contemplate, and that's kafi kaychay. We're not looking at the reasons of truth. We're looking at a reason which you can now take with and still into values, and that is exactly what the Ramban explains of Azanta lemitzvaisa. That you distill these mitzvahs and ascertain certain humanly perceived values, you will know how to do Yashavatayv. And he writes, he elaborates it in Pashas in Ashana. And also, anybody knows the first Ramban of Pashas Kedashi, where he says you distill X amount of Allah as you come to certain value systems. How to be a person, what God expects to us in our moral stature. That's what we understand. So that's the thing, we are dealing with your capability of understanding because the goal is for you to distill values. Let's take it further and show the source of this. The Ramam doesn't bring this Pasuk and Bishalach, he brings another Pasuk. So let's read that source in Mary Nebuchim. He starts in Perik Lamedal, V'yeshu be Odom Anoshim Shekoshe Be'nei Matitao Mitzvahs. There are people who have a hard time Seeing logic in mitzvahs. They rather like much more. They would prefer saying that the mitzvahs have no logic at all. Well, this is a very typical type of person. We have them today, which love believing that religion is beyond comprehension totally. And they feel that's the way it's godly. It's godly because it makes no sense. If it makes sense, it doesn't feel godly, and I want to feel godly, and therefore I will not say that it's logical. The Rama describes this as a um, mental illness. He calls this chole anefesh. I'm going to skip this because he says this is ludicrous. He continues and writes in that same paragraph, going down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelfth line, middle of the line. Ela davahu The truth is the opposite of this. The goal of mitzvahs, at least for us, it's for our good. Now, this is a Pasik. The Pasik says, if you recall the Pasik, it's actually in Veschanon, when the Ben Achachem says to his father, someday in the middle of a Tammuz, if you recall. Okay? As learn, if you read the Chumash there, it means what is the Tamea mitzvos? Why do we do mitzvos? Why do we do mitzvos? Not a question of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, it's a question, why do we do mitzvos? The question I asked my father for the research. Why do we do these things? And the answer given there, if you look carefully, what does the Pasuk say? The Pasuk says, um, that's the part you know. And God took us out through those ototem of theme as God explained himself in the beginning of Parshas. By the man she teed or to tie a little bit here, bow the man to sapper, but as they've been called Ben Bin Ha, Eta Sheta Lauti Bin Mitzrayim, via datem, Kiani Asher. All those mitzvahs and all those Nisim and the flesh were there to embed into us, to instill into us the belief, the reintroduction to monotheism. That's what the Pasik says, via datem, Kiani Asher, because for 200 years you forgot about. Read Rambam Avodah Zarah Perik Aleph Alacha Aleph, which explains this by Chava. 
So he says, basically, God took us out of there. We saw these nisim equals. We saw the yichud of Hakadosh Baruch Hu as also elaborated in Ramban at the last piece of Ramban Apashas Boy, which my students should know by now by heart. Why? Now, this is a very important thing to say on Yom Hatzmaut. The purpose of the Exodus, the reintroduction to monotheism, was in order to bring us to Eretz Yisrael. Why Eretz Yisrael? Because Eretz Yisrael is the place where the Koima Shlema, the total religious stature of the nation, can be realized. You obviously know that today, out of the whole Tariyag, you barely have something like 80. Most of Torah depends on. Migdash, Bibinyonai, Sanhedrin, Bikiyumai, Melech, Mechulu, and Eretz Yisrael, Bidiraisi. All Dine Zroim are only Jerabbanon. There's no Melech now. There's no Migdash now. All, look at the me and our mitzvahs that you have. It's just to say for our mitzvahs, Rubin Kekulam, you don't go near. The only place where there are Mamish, Betsivya, and Hamali, where we have all Tar Yag, Mitzvah, Skipshut, they can only be in Eretz Yisrael. Not as simple as that. The Koima Shlema of Adam, the way God perceives it, we should be mislabish, we should express ourselves through Tar Yag, Tar or Mitzvahs. Okay, Mavur Bar Chava and Tanya and Perik Dalit, if you really want to know, we should express ourselves totally, our Machshav and Dibir Maisa, in Tar Yag, Tar of the Mitzvahs, is only in Eretz Yisrael. Not now. In Eretz Yisrael, Bizman Bias Kulchem, when there's going to be Migdash al Mekaymai and Melech v'chulu v'chulu v'chulu. So that's what it means when it says by Sevenu, when it says La Ses Lanus Eretz Nishbala Votain. That is just a medium. It's a Echetimtza. What Echetimtza? For the next soft Pasik. By Sevenu Hashem Asot the Torah Chukim Ha'Ela. The Yerat Hashem Elokein, though, these Chukim are supposed to generate a God awareness and awe. This is elaborated on in Perignon Aleph of Chelik Gimel of Mer Nebuchim, where he said that the mitzvahs, one thing they do, by living that system, you are creating a sense of God awareness. The system as a system which governs our lives, point tells us we are governed. That's the idea of Yira. Rambam of and Mer Nebuchim explains this. The Yira Sashem Elokeinu, then says, Lanu, and this will be what for? This is good for us. Always, not just Noilam Haba. Lanu means now here where I'm living in Chicago in 19, whatever it be, and of some Sunday afternoon. And my daddy's supposed to tell me that. Lanu. Kalayamim. Lechayeshenu Kayayim. I say it gives us life the way we experience it. In a clear way. This is a Pasik and Chumch. And this is also what the Pasik says, if you remember, when it says in Pasha's Bite, Bavur Zeh, Osa Hashem, Mitzesi Ben Mitzray, Mitzesi Ben Mitzray, what's Bavur Zeh? So all you know, it means Matzah Mora, right? Rashi said, Bavur Shakayem, Mitzvaisov, Kemai Matzah Mora. Pesach and Matzah, excuse me. Kemai Pesach and Matzah. Pesach and Matzah is just a mushal which happens to be what's on the table now. It's not Pesach and it's not Matzah. This is just Dugmos, the mitzvahs, the mantishma es, es mitzvah so. Read Rashi there on the spot. The goal of, it's of, of reintroducing us to monotheism is to be an independent person, to allow us total fulfillment of religious stature through Hitlap Shut, expression through Tufol, Bechshav and Dibir Maisa of Kol Tayeg Mitzvahs equals in Eretz Yisrael. What's this for? This is good for us. And then he finally ends. It's stuck at Te'ilanu. This is the right thing to do. Stuck him from the positive. It's the right thing to do. That we should actually heed to uh, do fulfill these mitzvahs in front of God equals with a God awareness. With that God that you were introduced to, where in, in Mitzrayim through the Mitzrayim and the Nisim, Kasher Tzivanu. So we say two things here. We say we were we were reintroduced to monotheism in order to do this, and this is a good for us, and we understand it's the right thing to do. 
Well, I'll talk about the right thing to do. It's a Dabar Pashat. Once we attain the understanding that there's a Bayra and there's a Nivra, and we understood exactly what that means through the Asura Makos as elaborated in Ramban, understood the depth of Yichud Hashem of monotheism, we understand a Nivra, the right thing to do to justify his creation, to fulfill the agenda of his creator. And that's Pashat stuck at the alone. It's simply the right thing to do. But he added something that was objective. Stuck is the right thing to do. The subjective thing, feel good about it because it's good for you. So he's implying that there's things there which are good for us in this world. And that's what the Ramam brings. If you look carefully at this passage, the Ramam brings in that ninth line. It's not just stuck at the alone. It's the right thing to do because the will of the infinite God, which we were introduced to, it's also something you should subjectively feel good about. Now, what is that type lanu? Obviously, it means it betters you. It's good for you. You can feel good about it. The Amar, then he brings another passage to explain this. And this is a Pasik in Pashas Veschanon in Peri Dalit, Pasik Dalit, where the Pasik says, actually, right. Um, well, let's start Pasik Vav. Ushmartem Vasitem, Kihi Chachmatchem Ubinatchem. You must heed these mitzvahs and do them. It doesn't say at this in this pasik learn them. Just look at this very carefully. It doesn't say in this pasik learning them. It says I taught them to you. You've been directed. That was pasik A. Now we're talking about heeding it and fulfilling it. Heeding it means living with an awareness of its responsibility and obligation. That's shmirah, a mitzvah, to make sure that you know what you're doing. Therefore, you won't desecrate it or or, 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 or what you would call sin. So that's Shmira, living with an obligation of awareness and therefore responsibility. And then there's also Asiyah. Ushmartem, you must heed it, you must guard, you must put yourself in a, in a position which you are. And there's, there's no way you can have Shabbos without making sure you're a bucking of the Shabbos. If not just, you know, don't move. <laughs> One suggests, unless you know the Shabbos, you should be Mekayim Makis Choshech. Don't move. But the odds are you're going to do something wrong. Don't cook. Don't do anything. Garnish. Best you know, don't make a Shabbos on your own. The odds are you're going to blow it. It's not me. Look at the dumb of the Mishnah Brewer that he writes about that. Okay? That's called the Shmartan. That's one mitzvah. And then there's Vasisa. Why? Ki he, that Shmira and Asiya is Tokmaskam Ubinaskam Laene Agoy. We're not talking about the theoretical, we're talking about the practical laws. Are are perceived as your wisdom and your understanding in the eyes of the contemporary nation around you. Ashe Yishmu, they will hear it, Kulachukimaila, not just your Mishpatan, but even the statutes, which we know as Khazal explained, that means even things which seem to be not logical. They will hear them and they will say, Rak am chacham This is a, a knowledgeable and wise nation. You people carry heavy values. What does he write here? The Pusik writes that they will see our mitzvahs. They is who? We're not talking about the person which had a PhD from J Yale Divinity School. We're talking about the local prezi plumber, Girgashi farmer, I don't know what, Chivi, shoemaker, you know, as I there must be a candlestick maker there too that would fit into the Mother Goose story face with the baker, the candlestick maker. They are the little, the local yokel of the Knani, the Chiti, and Mariam Prezi Girgashi. We'll just see you coming into the land and hear your laws. They will say you are Am Chacham and Nafim, both on the Chukim and on the Mishpat. Read this in the Rabbat Kihare Bi'er Kiafila Chukim Kulam Morimetzukala Amim Shem Bechachma Ubitfuna. 
What does that mean? God has told you that the local pagan world will just look at your laws and statutes and even your ceremonies, your ceremonial laws, your edus, more so your chukim. They also remember lived in a world of chukim. They also had ceremonies. They also had, they were pagans. We're not talking about atheists here. For them, a religious practice and a value system, which makes sense, is something they celebrate. They looked at your system, they realized your chukim carry values that they can see as wise, and your mishpatim definitely carry values that they see as wise. I remember there's a famous Ramban in the drush of Teres Hashem Tamima, where he actually describes this, he mentions this in the beginning of the drush, and one should go through the drush at least once. He writes, what about the nations we know today? He says, Sha'af heim nochei ha Who am I talking about? Kroivim le'em tzayishu. Kegona notrim va'yishmeilim. She'etiku ha-tayru. They actually copied it over. V'lam du'a. They learned it. V'kish ha-gavre roimi ha-ktas ha-rosas. And when Rome actually overwhelmed many different language countries, they also did that. They spread Christianity. But he writes, those who live in the Far East, or I guess it was the Indians at the time in the Far West, not a very politically correct statement. As he quotes the passage I just read in Ereshchan, Ereshchan, Yes, when they looked at the value system found in Pasha and Mishpatim, and they realized that Hammurabi's codes, which saw the children and wives are nothing more than property, and there's no such thing as dignity of a human being as itself, and the idea of a feudal system is embedded in their psyche, just that they're in the India today, et cetera. There's X class A, class B, that different case, et cetera. Then, then they came and they had, they saw this idea that every person has a unique halacha and is unique. There's no such thing as a woman being your property or a child being your property. You killed a woman, you killed a child, you chayv misa. There's a value here, which they were not aware of before. So we're looking at the pagan world, not the theologians, but the local farmer looks at the system of chukim and mishpatim and sees their chachma. Ramam elaborates further and says, specifically the Pasik's talking about the chukim. The mishpatim I can understand, but even the chukim, they saw in the chukim logic, which made sense to them in their theological world. Now, why would the Torah tell this to me? Why would the Torah pat itself on the back? Hey, guys, feel good. The local Gyrgyz farmer and Chivi candlestick maker will feel that you are superior people. Excuse me. It's like telling Hulk that the local Lilyfoot likes him, respects him. Who cares? It's like, excuse me. It's like telling your Chaim Brisker that, you know, some local little kid in, a, in SAR really appreciates his Chachma. Well, that really gave Reb Chaim a high. Baruch Hashem self-contained. He doesn't need a formation of his ego from anybody else. Why would you tell this to me? Why would God tell me the local candlestick maker of the Girdashi is going to actually appreciate the wisdom of your religion? Does anybody here feel better by that that the Goyim at that time felt? That maybe you do. I got to be honest with you, when someone tells me, oh, I really enjoy your sheer, I say, well, thank God you have some kind of intelligence. That's all I can say. You know, I mean, honestly, don't need a reaffirmation of the, uh, if, I, if I wouldn't be convinced it's true, I wouldn't say it. And once I'm convinced it's true, it doesn't matter. So I don't understand. What is this whole spiel here? What's this Terry 
patting us on the back with the local Girgashi farmer. Zaymer Michael. Don't make too much sense. And the Territ says, God wants to tell you, listen, if the local Girgashi candlestick maker can see it, that means I expect you to see it too. That's what it's telling you. And that's what the Rambam was saying. That's the source of the Rambam. The Rambam brings this Pusik as a Raya, that therefore that what? That God told us there's Chuk and Mishpat to this, there's Avana here, that the candlestick maker can understand, and he's not a theologian. And he definitely can't understand the particulars. He doesn't look into the particulars. The best he can understand is the values coming out of the broad strokes. But that means to say, if God tells me that's there, that means it has theological value itself. There is a theological value in trying to understand that. Now, why? This is an interesting question. What, why? What is the theological value? Well, first of all, does it mean understanding the way we understand? No, the Raman clearly understood it. Value is to try to understand the dated value at the time, which would have been accessible to the Girgashi farmer and the Chivi candlestick maker. It's because of that the Raman Marnavuchim researched 60 books of Avodah Zara in the Alexandrian library. He writes this himself in order to understand the Avodah Zara, which was dated at the time of Avram Avinu going to Matan And it's from that information that he called his Tamei HaMitzvot. The Ramah was saying, no, the idea is you want to understand the values of God and why he gave it. What values did he teach the Torah and the Jews at Sinai? What values could the local Girgashi farmer and Chibi plumber tell from that and say, wow, these are Chukim, Mishpat, and Sadiqim? And that's exactly what he did. What he was looking for are what are the values we can learn through the prism of the local pagan. How would the pagan appreciate this? And that's what he did in Marinavuchim. And that's why you look carefully. All the reasons are dealing with the Avedazorus of that period. Not even the Avedazorus of the, which existed in the society surrounding it. You want to talk about if he was in Moorish Spain, but in Castilla, etc. That was Catholic. That was pure Roman Catholic. And there's nothing at all, believe me, in Marinavuchim which deals with that. Only with contemporary Avedazorus of the biblical period. Not clearly not talking about Greece and Rome, nothing at all. It's so interesting of all the mitzvahs that he can't, now it's very clear that he's very careful with this Tamiya mitzvahs. Everything has to some have some kind of a source in history and that's why he writes, interestingly enough, that on the Lechem upon him he can't find a reason. If it was just going to make some belly reason that we can use in an inspirational conversation where we do it ebbing sometime, you know what I mean, to do or something like that, you can't make up 12, huh? I'm sure all you guys that do advisors in NCSY Colo can give me a big speech on 12, 12, wow. Make them a wow around it and after it, and you'll start, I promise you, without telling your names, I can tell you people that can tell you stories about 12. From Heinz Ms. Morgan. And the Raman couldn't figure out why we need Lechem upon him. All the time he was in the midst of I don't know, is Lechem upon him. <laughs> you know why? It's very simple. Because he had no parallel to that at all in the pagan period to deal with. And he wasn't going to make up something out of his belly ache. Kefi means to say the man well established an understanding of the pagan period and its practices, etc., and its beliefs. And in light of that, how and understand the laws of the value behind the laws of the period as seen through the Girgashi farmer, those are the time my mitzvahs, which is right to know. Because from those you will call values which are perpetual. Both in the Chukim and the Mishpatim. You should it's late and I have to stop now because you guys have Mincha soon, if I recall. And uh, you need a chonus before tefillah or whatever it is. Okay. I definitely have had a long day. So, guys. So, I just want, just want to put this down. Let's read this to the end just to see it. I just want to show you before I go further, you know. Let's just show you what the Ramban does with this Rambam. The Ramban himself, if you um, have a, um, 
Ramban is the last, I have here one, two, three, four sides. The Ramban on the fourth side. Which is the Ramban in Dvorim Perik Chav Beis dealing with Kan Sipor. The Ramban writes, if you go to the um, third paragraph of the sheet that I have here, it starts with saying, Yan Shekazah HaRav B'Mitzvot. This idea that uh, the Rav means the Rambam, the Rav in the Lushan of Ramban always is the Rambam. The Rav, you say the Rav, doesn't mean the Briska Rav, doesn't mean the Rav, it means the Rambam. A Rav, Stam Rav is that. In his Asaga, he says, hey, Preschus, Harav is the riff. It's interesting. So when he's talking on the riff, Harav is the riff. Stomach, when he says the word Harav, he means the Rambam. Very important thing to copy. You just, just understand who you're talking about. I say this because I read this big article once for a certain very esteemed professor, which is Pro, he's, he's big goddess was so to speak Maimonides, okay, where he had this big article of the argument between the mystics and the rationalists about Tame Amitsu. So here we have the great clash of the titans between the rationalists, which would be Maimonides, and the mystic, the super mystic of the time was Ramban. We all know he was a student of Yitzhak Saginar, who was the son of the Ravid. He carried the Kabosh Kabbalah of mysticism. Today, Bokshem Moser of Cook printed like four sporum of Talmidei Rajba, which learned from the Rajba, the Kabbalists are Ramban. So you understand, next time we learn Rajba and Ramban, we're talking a bunch of mystics, okay, which happen to be great rationalists. So here you have where this mystic um, says he concurs totally with the rationalists and there really is no machlaikus. He says, He says, outside of the reward. Now he's going to quote a few chazal, which one you carefully. Why did God reveal the time in the Torah? What did it say? There is a time, it wasn't revealed. So it says there is a time. He continues, brings the Gemara Sachin and the Pasuk, the the ancient one covered. What does that mean? You're supposed to keep covered that which was ancient. What are you supposed to keep covered? You're not supposed to reveal things which God kept quiet, covered. What does that mean? I don't understand. You think the Ram didn't learn what I'm talking It's another portion. That's not the time I'm he's talking about. Yes, we agree the time of the Ramam has is the time that the Girgashi farmer and the Chiti candlestick maker can cook up. But what are the real time of the mitzvahs? Why do we keep it today? Why wasn't Basav Achalav annihilated after Shechitas Yetzor and Avodah Were all the different halachas, the Hachik Avodah Zora, not annihilated? Why were there Kerbonis Mechlal in Second Temple? There was no more Yetzor and Avodah Zora, if you recall. Why were they not, why were they not doing, and, and for goodness sakes, because that's not the reason, that is a reason the Girgashi farmer and the Chivi candlestick maker can't perceive, and that has religious value. Why, as we said in the beginning of this year, yes, they teach me morals and ethics, I got to figure out, you know what it says? It says it means to say that man is so, it's such a slippery slope, you do everything, but everything to walk away from any anhaga, which is doi melavoy now take that to mean the same thing for any anaga, which is daimel kfira, or any anaga, which is daimel midas roas. That's what the value system coming out of those alachas are. Every time I eat bus of a chav, I think we're so, we were torn away from our vaydizor. Not even to eat food close to daimel to them. That means to say I shouldn't be eating food, which is daimel kaifrim. I shouldn't be living a lifestyle, which is somehow similar of kfira and treatises, et etc. That's a value. And it's a value of, of something like 80 mitzvahs in the Torah. But it's a very big value. It doesn't have to be a by desire. Now translate it to wherever it's to, contemporary for you. But that's the value. And that's what we say, as the Ramban says, and the Ibn Ezra says, Vazanta le Because you have to know what is Yoshiva type be'ine Hashem. You can start going through the list of the Ramam and translating it into values for today's man.
The E, the Bala Kader writes a similar idea. Bala Kader writes that the, one of the purposes of Tommy Tyrus says the Gemara says, Kola Isaac, but Tyrus Oila, Kiela Hikter of Oila. What does that mean? You say, Aza Makayman, you yet to the mitzvah. So he's a shtickle mashma magnavram, because you're supposed to say, after the Yerotsman, you might say, Hafti Chatos, Kiela Yikrafti Chatos. And that. The Balakeda doesn't think so. Balakeda says, Tyrus Oila means you learn the ideas and the values that we see from Korban Oila. And you may not be able to sacrifice an animal, but you can do whatever that's supposed to do to you. If that was supposed to make you feel humble in the eyes of God, to feel that your life is worthless, you really should be slaughtered and burnt into a crisp. And there's nothing you worth having. Then, Brother dear, woo, <laughs> you're going to do tshuva. That's a value. means you contemplate on the ideas behind the different turbans. This whole my mom the Balatani describing, for example, different Yetzirahs, Bechemina Bakr, Menatsoin, Kerbana. He describes different Yetzirahs, which are called Bakr, Tsoin, etc. When you contemplate that, you realize I got to take my book or my, my Taurus, whatever that is. I'm not going to elaborate here. This is not a dish which goes for hours. Then, wow, there's something to think about. When you think about Tsoin and realize what they have deserved, Tsoin was. I taught this once in this year. And understand that I'm drawn to that. And folk and right to that, they cut it off. That's the idea of a carbon. So I, you can take that and make a value out of it. That's what the Ramban and Ibn Ezra are saying here in Pasha's Bishalaf. Listen to the value system. That's what the Balakeda says. This means that the Pirti Alakas, it means the value system, the Vyazanta limits spice of which we see in that part of Chatas. That's about Balakeda. This is what he said. He takes it even further. Okay, I think I'm going to stop now. The Ramban here, I'll tell you what he says. I will, I will just uh, you know, give it in one line. It's me enough. The Ramban takes it further. says, agreed, there's obviously the reasons of the Ramban, of the Rambam. And he says, yes. And the reason of the Rambam, the Rambam himself writes, there are basically four categories. Actually, five. One, to be oiker a deya she'ena nechayna. B, to be mashrish a deya nechayna. See what God does to what effort to live a certain lifestyle in order to remove a, a false perception of truth and how to embed, to internalize a true perception of truth. This would make you be obsessed with truth and abhorred with things which are not true. You know what kind of value that is? You pray for it every day, not every day, whenever you pray. And you start looking at your sitter. What are you telling the truth here? What are you lying? You know, when you say, What for? Can they want to understand the Taishvis? You're a chaperon. You won't be able to live without it. It's on you. You're begging Rachmanis. I want to understand. It's call. When did you ever try to do call in your life? Do you have a goal of understanding? So that's what Emma says. Now, when you learn this, you understand the importance of being oiker adeya loin nechayna and to be mashish adeya nechayna. You already have a value here, an obsession with truth and abhorrence with something which is not true. That's a tremendous value. The other things he says are to be mashish a good midah or to be oiker a bad midah. And the other category says basically Yeshua Shal Ailam to make a proper system of civil order. He says you between these five option goals, this is Sakhako, the picture of his time mitzvahs. Well, obviously, every society changes, but those are the goals. So that is true. How they are expressed in these different myths, this the Gigashi farmer will understand. This, the local candlestick maker of the Khiva will understand. You don't even need a PhD in divinity from Yale. No, you don't need that. You need to have common sense, look at the contemporary religion at the time and realize the differences. And that's what the Ramam did. 
The Ramban kicks it further into timing which are beyond the timing with the metaphysical, the timing which are in the Storos, where he is the Kabbalist. And he says that's also true. You read the Ramban carefully in that context, you'll understand what he's adding on the Ramban. He's accepting the Rambam because he doesn't think that the Girgashi farmer will understand the Kabbalah of the Merkava. And yet he thinks it's Chacham, even the Chukim Mishpatim. But he's adding, there is more. There were things that even Shloyma Melech knew everything of the time of Yoinim and didn't know that. But he is agreeing with the Rambam, if you look at it carefully, there is no argument. I just want to sum this up. The mucker of time and mitzvahs is basically a the pasuk and b'shalach of the zantel and mitzvahsov, the shemata mitzvahsov, etc. The pasuk is shomay tishma lekoyla shem alokecha v'zantel mitzvahsov, as the Ibn Ezra and the Ramban explain. The goal is values. The Ramam sees it also particularly from the pasuk of the of Ami Goy Godosh Leichukim Mishpatim Sadikim which the local boy will say, the Uma Sa'ilam, they will say, the Ram says, even the Chukim will make sense in the pagan world of the local Girgashi farmer and Chibi candlestick maker. Okay, and the God is telling me that because at least you have to know that. Now, what's the purpose? The purpose cannot be because those things apply to you today because the Rambam gave reasons which only applied in the biblical era. Overwhelmingly, so many of his time and mitzvahs were obsolete as soon as they walked away from paganism. Definitely became obsolete in this period where it was Islam, which not even of a or even Catholicism did not have, it had nothing to do with this. It was clear as day that he's looking for the time for the Pasik, which is said, Miga Chokmuk Shun Sadikim, that the Torah says that the Girgashi farm will understand. The value is we understand, we take that now. We have to become Bibbakim as the Rama was. The 60 books on Avaita Zora, contemporary Avaita Zora at the time. And that's how we understood the dated reason for the mitzvahs. And yet it is a value for there. Yes, we have to look at those mitzvahs and now understand there's a value there that I can extrapolate to the Avin Dover, Mitaich Dover, to 2021 or what, 20, whatever it is this year. Tavshin Pei Beis, those Beis. So that, yeah, it's 22 now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's uh that's what we have to understand. That's Tami Amitsus. So the speech about Karbanas will be bottle again. The ignorance is is is, is, is is beyond contempt. If you saw the mucker of this Rambam, you saw the way we learned today, you obviously understand that anybody says that actually the Rambam himself writes for Purish. What one of these said, Zaysa Torah, Loitia Muchlefes, there will be no change of halacha in any fashion, form, or size. There will not be any bitl of any mitzvahs. This is all something which I hate to say what the Raman categorizes that belief in. And anybody who knows Reb Chaim knows that Nebuchadnezzar be Paris is also not be Paris. And therefore, you have to be very careful before you, who you listen to and what you read. And the quality is that the Raman says, before you engage in all these different shilas, do yourself a favor, Kimavur, Baram, Perik, Dal, the Yisraeli, I tell you, first have a total command of Avais, the Abay of Arova, for there, Miyashi, for Samoya, for Saleh. Have a great Mincha. You have to have 10 minutes to Mincha run. Thank you very much, Avi. I'll send you the recording, Mr. Shem. Thank you. Go to send me a video if you have one. No problem. Thank you, Avi. Bye, boy. Go enjoy your afternoon prayers.